Hello, my name is Don Simon. I live near Troy, Virginia in the United States, and I'd like to present my entry for the Micromark Ship Model Contest. The subject for my model entry is the U.S. Navy heavy cruiser Pensacola, CA-24, which entered service in early 1930. The model is in 1 to 1200 scale, which is 1 inch is equal to 100 feet. And you can get an idea of what a small scale that is by the 6 inch ruler and the U.S. penny that I have alongside it. That can give you an idea of the, the length of the model. She's shown in her pre-war colors of 5L navy gray for the vertical surfaces and dark deck gray on some of the horizontal surfaces, such as the steel decks. She also has natural wood decks that were planked over the steel decks, and you can see those here. I'll go over the materials that I use to construct this model in just a little bit. The inspiration for this model came from a beautiful set of plans in the book U.S. Cruisers by Norman Friedman. There's a beautiful set in here drawn by Mr. Alan D. Baker III, as you can see here. And those are what I use to construct the model from. The Pensacola and her sister, the Salt Lake City, were the first U.S. Navy 8-inch gun heavy cruisers built in accordance with the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922. They were not to exceed 10,000 tons, and in fact, they came out quite underweight at 9,100 tons. They also had a very unusual gun arrangement. They were considered to be somewhat overgunned with 10 guns, and they had a bit of an unusual arrangement in that they carried their guns in four turrets, with two of the turrets being triple turrets and superimposed over the twin turrets. Uh, this arrangement was not repeated in later cruisers. They reverted to having nine guns in three triple turrets, and that pretty much became the standard pattern throughout the rest of the U.S. Navy gun cruiser development. Pensacola was very active in the fleet prior to the war. And after the American entry into the Second World War, she saw extensive service in the Pacific, being at Coral Sea, being at Midway, the fighting around Guadalcanal, where she was terribly damaged by a Japanese torpedo. Uh, it's it's a, a tribute to the men that saved that ship that she didn't sink. It was some terrific damage that she took. Um, but this model depicts her in somewhat happier days. It's peacetime. She's running at high speed here. She's got four aircraft, um, two on the catapults, one on the open deck around the aft stack. And typical of pre-war ships, she would carry a complement of boats. There are actually nine boats that are nestled in the boat deck here. Uh, during wartime, most of those would have been removed, but during peacetime, they would have been carried. And so there she is, ready to go. Next, I'll explain some of the materials that were used in the construction of this model. Okay, I'd like to go over um, just some of the materials that are used in the construction of the model. The primary material is plain old basswood. You can buy this in any hobby or craft store. You can buy it online from multiple suppliers. I usually use the three inch wide uh, sheet stock as my raw material, and I really only need the three smallest sizes, the 1 32nd inch, the 16th inch, and the 3 32nd inch thicknesses. This pretty much forms the hull, the major portions of the superstructure, and things such as large gun turrets, if the ship should have those. Moving on, for ships that have a sheer line to them, that's where the deck sweeps up, I'll make the uppermost deck out of the 1 32nd inch thick material, and then I'll support it at the bow and stern with wedges. Now I use a small little jig that I made here out of poplar that you can get at the hardware store to help me cut those jigs. I've found that a three degree angle usually works about best and the nice thing is, is that you can easily mark the jig um, 
to find out where you would need to cut it to get a specific thickness at the end. This comes in very handy for getting the correct height that the deck needs to sweep up at both the bow and the stern. One of my first flush cutting uh, tools was a plain blade salvage from a typical Stanley uh, trim plane that you can buy at the hardware store. Just super glued it to the bottom of a block of wood. It worked quite nicely for a while until I realized you couldn't sharpen that. Fortunately, later on, some other woodworking projects required me to buy a flush trim plane. This one's from Veritas Company, and this works great. It can come apart, and you can sharpen that plane blade to an unbelievable level of sharpness, and it works very well for cutting the wedges that you would place under the bow and the stern to get the deck shear line that you're looking for. The other use for basswood is to take blocks that are about three quarter of an inch or an inch wide and get a lot of shavings off of them. If you have your plane properly adjusted and sharpened, you can get a very beautiful plane shaving that's pretty much even in thickness, running under some water and low heat from an iron, and you've got a whole bunch of plane shavings. And these are great for doing the plank decks. On a steel ship, the wood planking actually sits above the steel. It's not the structure, it's really more of an insulation and, and traction type material on the deck. And at this scale, you're not going to plank it with individual planks. However, when you use this technique, the grain of the wood very uh, strongly suggests the individual planks. It is natural wood color and it looks pretty nice on the model. The other materials used are paper basically sheet paper, cardstock, thicker uh, types of paper products like mixed media or Bristol board. Those get used a lot for things such as the uh, open decks for bulwarks, uh, bases of open gun mounts, airplane wings and tails, things of that nature. And that uh, gets used up. For the mast, the spars, the gun barrels, things of that nature. There are various different sizes of brass wire, brass rod, brass tube that will get used to make those components. The other thing also that gets used is very thin copper wire. Now this bit I salvaged many years ago out of an old lamp cord. I think it's 36 gauge when you get to the individual strands. It's very thin. And that's what gets used for the rigging for the most part. And also, if you twist it over, it emulates anchor chain quite well. The other nice thing about using wire for the rigging is that you can actually put the natural catenary that you will see in lines. Because if you look at a real ship, it's pretty rare that you're going to see any of the lines stretch so tight that they're taut and straight. You will see a natural sag or catenary in them. The final bits of materials that I use are fly tying silk and thread. Now these I'll stretch in a crisscross pattern over uh, what you would call a loom in different directions. And that's how I make the lifelines. And there's the leftover from the original project. Um, you can see how I the black thread is used as the stanchion and the cream colored fly tying silk is used as the lines. Liquid super glue to hold it all together, dab off the excess and then put it on a piece of glass and cut off, trim off the excess, and you have lifelines, which you can actually do in this scale. So that's a quick overview of the materials used at this scale. As you can see, you don't have to go to extravagant or exotic materials. All of these are readily available, and with a little bit of a TLC, you can put together a very nice model.